Soccer in the ACC is always strong, but this year may be the most competitive yet. Last weekend, four nationally ranked teams advancing to tonight's semifinals in Cary. They try to stay alive with hopes of taking the trophy on Sunday. The ACC semifinals, next. Watching ACC Network Extra, welcome to Cary, North Carolina and the 2018 ACC Conference Championship Semifinal at Salem Stadium, home to the NWSL champion North Carolina Courage, home to the 2018 College Cup, and today home to a great matchup, Clemson and North Carolina. Two upsets in the quarterfinals, Clemson and Florida State set to take on North Carolina and Virginia with a spot in the championship Sunday on the line. And with that, hello everybody and welcome. Joined by former ACC NCAA champion Cal Whitehill, Mike Watts on hand. And this feels massive because the teams in it are so good. Well, the ACC is one of the best conferences, if not the best conference in the country. And Eddie Redwanski, the coach of Clemson, said being in the Final Four in this ACC championship is almost like the College Cup because how good the ACC is from top to bottom this year. And it's going to be a tough conference to win this championship. Yeah, no doubt about it. Let's start with Clemson, 2016 regular season champions. Eddie Redwanski has a, a team with a very diverse scoring background, all eyes first, certainly, on Speckmeyer. Well, she's a special player for them. She has started off strong with them in freshman year, but then she had to go to the U-20 World Cup for Venezuela. She has opportunity to still play for three different countries because she's citizens for the United States and Germany as well. But she's special for them up top, and she's going to be, have to be special today because she's going up against a very tough UNC defense. And what makes her special is her knack for getting goals, scoring in great positions, and this game winner against Boston College in the quarterfinals against a very stout North Carolina defense. It's going to be missling Emily Fox. She's in Europe with the U.S. women's national team. Lesia Russo is out as well. So how about an unlikely hero, a, a native of Chapel Hill, Alex Kimball steps up in the quarters. Well, she has an opportunity now, and she is running through it. She helped UNC beat Virginia Tech in the quarterfinals on Sunday, and now it's her turn. She has to step up big, and, and it's against another great defense in the ACC in Clemson, so she's going to be that point person for UNC to really set the pressure defensively, but get a goal. It is her turn to be that person that UNC this UNC team looks to to score goals. North Carolina's 11th consecutive win. They're unblemished in the ACC. And Kimball is bigger role as she's ever had in a redshirt senior season. It's North Carolina, the number one seed. Clemson, the number five seed. Coming up next in the ACC Conference Semifinal. Intermittent rain in Cary, North Carolina for the first of our two ACC semifinals. It's Clemson and North Carolina meeting as Florida State waiting to take the field next against Virginia. With Cat White, and Mike Watts, we meet the starting lineups, and we begin with Clemson. One change, Lauren Hart's in. Mackenzie Smith is out due to injury. Yeah, and they'll be in the 4-3-3 with Speckmeyer holding up top. But the key players for them is Westlake and Jones on those outside. They have to also help the pressure up there, but they need to get back and deal with the offensive power of North Carolina. Clemson at 4-3-3, and their head coach is Eddie Rudwanski. Eighth season, there is one team in the ACC he has not beaten. It's North Carolina. Clemson hasn't beaten them since 2000. They have made four straight NCAA tournaments despite missing last year's ACC championships. Here are the third-ranked North Carolina Tar Heels. They make one change. Emily Fox is with the U.S. national team. Morgan Goff steps in. Yeah, and she's going to step in nicely with this defense. Fox is an excellent player. But Goff has come in really strong for them. Works really well with Bingham, Wubamoy, and Ashley on that outside. And Ashley's a special player for them, an all ACC player this year. She gets up and down that flank so well. So they'll be in that 4 3 3, just like Clemson. And the head coach is the incomparable Anson Dorrance. His 42nd total year at North Carolina, his 40th season as the head coach for the North Carolina Tar Heels women's soccer team that have won 22. NCAA championships. He's sitting at a spry 842 career wins on the women's side. Over a thousand for his total collegiate head coaching career. Last six meetings between these two. All results for North Carolina, 5-0-1. But they've all been decided by one goal or less. 
Sergio Gonzalez is our referee. He waits at midfield. Clemson in the orange. Carolina in the white and Tar Heel blue. We're underway from Cary, North Carolina in the semifinal round of the 2018 ACC Soccer Championship. The foot of Staub. And Staub for Clemson has been very impressive this year. One goal, but 11 assists from the center back position, which she was awarded the All ACC Defensive Player of the Year. And she's got that long throw that's so dangerous. And that's one thing that both of these teams have to focus on. Clemson and the attacking set pieces, they are so good in that area. And North Carolina has to be very conscious when they're defending those and make sure Clemson doesn't get any easy opportunity. Westlake playing this too far. Leshnack kicks it away. These two teams last met Sunday, September the 23rd. So one nothing North Carolina win. As UNC goes perfect 10 for 10 in the conference, they are now gone two straight conference seasons without a loss. Takafita Goff. And this is another key for Clemson. They're extremely good at building out of the back, but one of one thing that UNC is always known for is their high pressure, and they've been smarter this year in their pressure, and they have to deal with that. No unnecessary risks in the back. Don't give the ball away too easily to, to North Carolina. Go direct if you need to. And for McKeever, she is excellent with her feet, but sometimes she does like to keep that possession. She has to be smart in her distribution. Otto up the right-hand side. Jeski. Striding ahead, slip ball gets tapped away. Kimball simply take a corner here for North Carolina. There is McKeever, what an incredible year she's had. Eight shutouts in 15 starts, but more importantly, the Golden Gloves, the U-20 World Cup, taking England to the third place finish, and ultimately into the semifinals. Some impressive numbers on the year. Pale in comparison to only the goalkeeper on the other end. Corner for North Carolina. Schultz. Reversing Dorian Bailey. Clemson trying to get out on the break. It's Speckmeyer. And this is where Clemson has a very good strength in their transition. And if they could have gotten some numbers forward, that would have been a great opportunity for them to overload the North Carolina defense as that was a poor turnover from Bailey, but a good recovery to get the ball back. Coming into the game, Kat, you felt like dealing with pressure was going to be the most significant key for Clemson to come out with a win. What does that look like? How does Clemson deal with the, the waves that Carolina can bring? Well, they can't get frustrated with themselves. They can't be afraid to go direct because they're used to, to keeping the ball in the back, building it, finding the midfield, playing in and around for their their outside players. So they can't get frustrated they give the ball away easily, but they have to so they have to be smart with that possession. They have to to know where the players are for North Carolina and, and look for the space, the pockets of spaces they leave when they do pressure that back line. Ruben Moy pings the ball too far and out. There's the all-time series history. It is very North Carolina dominated in the ACC tournament. Carolina 7-0 against Clemson. But these last few matchups have been a little closer to the point where Eddie Rodwanski is saying, when's the ball going to bounce our way? Well, the nice thing is there's not a lot of rain, so the ball, you know, it's going to be a slick field out there, so there is that chance that uh, they could bounce their way, get a little ricochet off a player just because it is so, it is wet from the rain that, that happened before. So he might get his opportunity today. Pulling back Ruben Moy. Played every minute at right center back. Leshnack. That away just in time. Osborne. Bingham, Ernie Jones, long run. Goff will get there in her fifth start of the year. Comes to Alex Kimball, chance to finally be the star of the redshirt senior. 
trying to hold up a run and is looking for Andrew Jeske. And McKeever comes out with Julia Ashley pushing forward. Man, that's just a big miscommunication there from Kim Bull and Andrew Jeske. Andrew Jeske was running on her right, wanted to make the run in for a little slip ball, but Clemson's defense did a nice job of staying together and forcing Andrew Jeske to adjust her run because she would have been offside. Osborne off a of golf. Carolina under control. Eight goals allowed, tied for the best mark in the ACC this year. A team that was 8 0 and 1 at home. Some of those home matches came here and carries the finishing touches put on their new stadium that's set to open next year. Hanson Dorrance saying, we're not gonna complain about driving 25 minutes to an exceptional surface, home to the reigning NWSL champions. Well, and there's great memories here too. Won some national championships on this field, ACC championships, so this field for North Carolina can sometimes feel like home, even if it's not necessarily in the the city of Chapel Hill, but I did take a look at that stadium and the stands are going in today. The stands are in and it's looking really nice. So the players that will be around for next year are going to be very, very excited to see how that turns out. Step by here and Andrew Jeske played up. There is a late whistle and Kimball remains down. It's a free kick for North Carolina. Kimball working really hard. Oh, it just the last. That is that does not feel good for Kimball. It's nice to see her getting up so quickly because that was a late tackle from Clemson and got her right in the ankle. Kimball, world class vertical, but the muscle density we were told the people just seemed to bounce right off of her. In case her shin wasn't quite so lucky. Carolina's got some options here. There's another set piece for Carolina. That's really where Clemson's offense is at its best. Ball lined it forward. Hitter Jeske got ahead to that. It skips off the upright now. Andrew Jeske got ahead on it, but Kimball was right behind her. Probably had a better angle at that ball to get a finish, but just goes over the bar. Clemson needs to do a little bit better job of getting a body on these players, not making it that easy for them to. to get an easy jump like that and get a ball that close to, to being on frame. Throw for Julie Mackin, her 41st career start. for the Tigers. Helen Colborne. And there's the late whistle. And I wouldn't be surprised if this becomes a very physical game. Both these teams are not afraid to be of the physicality of the game. They, they want to win this game. This is important to, to both of these teams to win this ACC championship just because like we talked about in the open, this is like a Final Four, and this prepares you for the NCAA tournament, and you have to have that will to win and and work on if you're down a goal, what should you do? If you're up a goal, what you should do in dealing with that, that type of physicality in each game. Goff and Schultz gets around the edge and drives the service. Header snapped off the crossbar. Campbell is there wide. Andrew Chesky, a second open header, and Kimball can't can into the open net. It was so very close. What a great first move from Schultz here. First touch is, is what beats Osborne right there, and then the cross is just perfectly placed to Andrew Chesky and misses on the crossbar, and Kimball wants this ball back, and she should have finished that as the goal was wide open. And this excellent heading presence there from Andrew Chesky just to get up and she was even smart. I saw her right before the ball came. Just gave a little bit of a nudge to the defender, which put the defender out of position and allowed her for that for that opportunity and just missed it. 
It's only Kimball's third start of the year. Started against Illinois and then not again until the ACC semi, uh, rather quarterfinal, again here in the semifinal. Well, she has to make those to, to replace someone as good as Alessia Russo. And Alessia Russo is the type of player that got a call up into the England full national team before breaking her foot a couple of games ago and won ACC Offensive Player of the Year. Kimball plays it through, and this is picked up by McKeever. Yeah, Rookie of the Year, now Offensive Player of the Year, Russo. That's a major loss. It's a, it's a huge loss, and, you know, Anton talks about, he, he tells everybody, you know, North Carolina knows about whiners, and it's true, you never whine, but it's still hard when you're missing such a quality player in her. I mean, she had an amazing U20 World Cup this past summer, or you have summer in France, and could have gotten an opportunity to get a look in front of Phil Neville and the England squad for the possibility of a, a full team World Cup this summer, also in France. Asking what what they were still working on this Carolina team despite the gaudy record. And he said, well, we're just devastated to lose Russo. And now we, we have to find a way to replace that production. When they also lost Fox to the US team and he was encouraging her to go because you don't want to miss out on an opportunity like that. And Rachel Jones as well, she's going to be playing in the World Cup with Jamaica, but she's injured right now. So those are three quality players for North Carolina that are not in this game right now. By the same token, you asked the opposite coach, Eddie Radwanski said, yeah, we'd like to be completely healthy too. We're, we're missing some pretty significant players. Ask whether or not the game plan changes. Became pretty clear, not all that much. Well, Mackenzie Smith's a big one to be missing today. She is a, a good player right in front of that uh, back four for Clemson. And, and there's Russo. And right now just had surgery at the beginning of the week. Struck by Goff. Andrew Jeske came running in again. This will be a corner. Did deflect on the way out. Andrew Jeske has been a real target so far. Player who last year led the team in scoring with eight goals only has three right now. Well, they're definitely seeing a, a, a on game tape. One thing to do is get that early cross in and get Andrew Jesse coming in on that far side because that's the second time already that we've seen that in this game. Moving boy gets by Kimball and falls. Lost by Otto. Jeske playing back. Ruben Moyle will have a second crack at this. Lining it toward the goal line. Header snapped aside. And this will be another corner. That was a defensive header. Yeah, an excellent play because that was a, a great ball in from Ruben Moy and for Clemson to win that and put it out. It was a tough ball to deal with. Number 23, Lotto Ruben Moy. Another look here for North Carolina in the 14th minute of play. Ruben Moy. That's a foul. Kimball. Riding in in the middle of the field. Morgan Goff. And a piece on the, uh, the back door. Well, for Clemson. You know, won the title in the regular season back in 2016. Still a 10-win team a year ago. They fell out of the ACC tournament on the last day of the regular season, falling to Florida State. A 2-2 draw and not enough to get them in. And this year, to a 12-7-0 run, picked up an impressive 18 points in the ACC season. Finished fifth, then went on the road to BC. A result there, Speckmeyer the lone goal and a 1-0 win. A player down behind. This is a dangerous play. The cleat, the nice move here from Andrew Jeske and then looks like Staub comes in and as she's sliding, that cleat just comes up and hits Andrew Jeske and you see she's in a lot of pain. Still and that's down. tough because, yeah. you know, it's not it's it's not a foul because she got the ball first. It was just the after the slide, which is the unfortunate part for Andrew Jeske because and, that still does not feel good, but not a foul there from Staub. It was a nicely timed ball or a nicely timed tackle. Andrew Jeske, as Doran says, can write her own ticket. 
terms of her future. Really impressive athletic specimen, a youth national teamer from 13 years old on. And the player that was a national high school player of the year in Maryland before making her way to Carolina. Well, for Clemson right now, you're about 15 minutes into the game, and really the, the building that we know they're so good at, we haven't seen reach the final third yet. Well, they haven't really built up as much as they would like. They would like to outpossess this North Carolina team, and the pressure's gotten to them, and they're having to do more direct balls, and right now North Carolina is winning most of the 50-50 balls. They've been more competitive, and something just has to settle down. Schultz. Can to take it away. Plays it into Kimball. Bingham. There's Goff. But right there is an example of how quickly North Carolina wins the ball back. And that's why they Clemson has to be smarter in the back. Don't be afraid, even if you are losing those 50-50 balls on the direct, do not lose the ball in that position. That is just something that against North Carolina you have to know that deep in, in the back of your mind that you have to get rid of the ball just a, a half a second quicker than you're used to. Speckmeyer, not a lot of touches yet. Header came in from Pinto. And Schultz, who can have a really quick trigger from this angle. It's the step over. He lost it, and the whistle Osborne. Ball. Clemson. Well, I actually liked what Osborne did there. She, the initial touch from Schultz had beaten her, but good recovery speed, used her body well, but just extended her arms a little too much, which is why she got the call. But watching her in a few games this year, I've liked how good she is in a 1v1 situation, and that's why you don't see a lot of the Clemson players coming over to help her, because she typically wins those battles. Beckmeyer and Jones into the wall. There's Osborne, four times the leading scorer at Huntingtown High School, Maryland, but now key defender at outside back. There's the service and the header down. Andrew Jeske, McKeever made the kick save. It's kept in play. Andrew Jeske bringing it down. Chance to serve this near the byline. Knocked across and off of Staub. Wonderful work from McKeever. Well, this is why she got the Golden Glove in the U-20 World Cup this summer because of saves like this. This is incredible, point blank. Oh, both her and Staub together actually were able to flick that out, but she had that position covered. Staub was there. Tremendous save from Clemson. Service with the header being back set. Otto. There's Schultz. Cross field. Ubin Moy has been taking the corners. Moy lofting it up, McKeever not enough on that, and it's tapped wide by Otto. Carolina shot by number six, Taylor Otto. Well, Otto is another all ACC player that really wishes she had this ball, ball back. As good job initially from McKeever. He wasn't able to get it out as far as she would like. It lands right on the foot of Taylor Otto, and you see the reaction in her face. She knows that she should have gotten a better effort and at least gotten it on frame. Bingham. Game one of our double header in this ACC championship semifinal round. It's Florida State and Virginia. Two of the most decorated coaches in Division I matching up and some really technical talent. Be right here on the Watch ESPN app. ACC Network Extra. Of course, the final Sunday, noon Eastern on ESPNU. It's going to be a different game than what we're watching right now. FSU and Virginia are very possession style teams. They are so clinical on the ball, technically gifted at every position. They don't really like to go direct nearly as much as these teams. Not as high a pressure like North Carolina. So it'll be interesting to see who comes out victorious in that game as Florida State beat Virginia earlier this season 2-0. to zero. Warren Harks in on the challenge. Daughter of Cindy, John, brother of Ian. Incredible soccer family they've got there. Ian Harks just eliminated from the playoffs. 
D.C. United by Columbus in shocking fashion. Cindy, a great player in the collegiate ranks. John Harks just took over Greenville in USL League One next year, former coach for FC Cincinnati. Of course, D.C. United, U.S. national team, and so on. This will get all the way out, and it's a goal kick for North Carolina. And this is where they need to get Jones and Westlake on the other side more involved. They haven't gotten the ball nearly enough, and if they can beat North Carolina in the possession, but the key for their possession is finding North Carolina out wide in those pockets of spaces and get some crosses in. turns away from the pressure. What an impressive year she's had. Epitomizing, we were told, everything about embracing opportunity. This will run out on the far touch line. And you just got to look at Leshnack and we were amazed. It's been now longer than that, but when she entered this game, 988 minutes and 15 seconds. Exactly right. Without a goal. Uh, so that's a pretty impressive stat for Leshnack and goal for North Carolina. The streak is continuing as we're entering the 24th minute. Got into up over 1,000. She's only made 24 saves this year, has not been called upon yet. A zero save shutout against Virginia Tech last time out. Now you always want to see, when you see a goalkeeper, you want to see as few saves as possible because that <laughs> it doesn't mean you're getting shelled. So that's a good stat for a goalkeeper to not have a lot of saves. Now the clean sheets for North Carolina of late, awe-inspiring stuff. It's five straight clean sheets. Five straight wins, part of an 11-game winning streak by North Carolina. Andrew Jeske searching this is wide right of the post. There's Leshnack. Last goal allowed was, believe this, August 22nd in the second minute against Texas. And since then, it first was alternating halves with Claudia Dickey, and now these last five games, the you know, top being the most recent in the quarterfinal round, five straight shutouts all by a lonesome. You heard both of these teams stress collective team defending in the sense that uh, they don't have time for players that aren't interested in that segment of the game. Yeah, it's not a time anymore of the modern soccer player. You have to play both sides of the ball. You can't just be like, I'm gonna sit up top and hope the ball comes close to me so I can get a goal. And same with defenders. You gotta go forward, you gotta help in the attack. And uh, for both these teams, the collective defending is key. And right now, North Carolina is winning that battle because the pressure's gotten to Clemson. But the good news for Clemson, they still haven't allowed a goal because that's how good they are in the back and their goalkeeper, McKeever. So as much as North Carolina is knocking on the door, nothing has come on that scoreboard, and that is what ulti ultimately matters. Clemson this year, a 14-5 goal differential in the first half. Actually pretty similar uh, what North Carolina has been able to provide. Otto had that reach up, hit her on the elbow. And finally a chance to settle the ball in the attacking half oh, for Clemson. Oh, and this is where North Carolina has to lock on. We talked about this early. This is a key for them defensively because of how good Clemson is and they're on their attacking set pieces. That's Staub. 11 assists this year, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. Staub feathers the ball over the top and it's punched aside by Leshnack. Hit by Mackin. Mackin saw Kimball trying to close down the lane. Header by Westlake and Leshnack take over for UNC. Good clearance from Leshnack on that service because that was an excellent service in from Staub. You can see why she has so many assists. Andrew Jeske has gotten around. Plays an early ball looking for Schultz and McKeever will cut this off. Schultz. 
Matt's actually a bit of a comedian. We actually heard that uh, when Russo had surgery this past week, the team went to visit her, and thankfully, Schultz wore her Halloween costume, a little safari gear, and a couple laughs out of a room that otherwise didn't have much to smile about. Schultz came in soccer gear on this day. That would have been very interesting if she had showed up in her safari attire. When the rain it's was coming still, yeah. back, it would have made sense. Yeah, still in the Halloween spirit, I guess. Substitution for Carolina, entering number seven. A couple changes, first subs of the game. Rachel Jones comes on. Been a little while since she's been part of the equation. Annie Kingman. Checks in her 15th appearance. Andrew Jeske and Schultz, the two wingers, take a seat. It's good to see Rachel Jones out there. When we talked to Anson Dorrance, he made it seem like she wouldn't be playing in this game, so she must be getting a lot better with her injuries. There's Jones. It's her 18th appearance game, winning goals against Clemson and FSU this year. Exciting time for Jamaica and her as they're going to the World Cup for the first time ever. First Caribbean nation to make a World Cup. It's unbelievable, CONCACAF tournament this past October. It's a corner now for Carolina. Oh, wait, wait, wait. 25 minutes in, headed straight down caught by McKeever. Reaches over Goff. Well, of course, that all started here, World Cup qualifying. The U.S. women's national team is off in Europe. There are seven Tar Heels that are currently with that team. Not, not all current, of course. to Bailey. Power couldn't strip it away. Staub. Staub lost it. Able to poke it back into central defense. Oh, orange jerseys outnumbering white on their way up the field. Speckmeyer, that's too far. Transition is an area where maybe Clemson can get out. Yeah, and a, a really good job on the transition there, but a recovery run there from Kento, showing her speed. And getting back and helping the UNC defense, but that was a good opportunity for Clemson had they been able to get that final pass. By the way, when, when you were with the national team, were you watching games like this during the international windows? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Clemson's got some significant players in the NWSL as well. Not to be outdone. That skips into Dorian Bailey. Away from Pinto. And the race is on here. Trying to create a little separation for Courtney Jones. Alongside it, and Bingham steps in. Well, you can see in your picture, there's only three orange jerseys really in their attacking half. You had another player coming in late. And the, the, it's been exhausting right now for Clemson to deal with the UNC pressure, and they're not getting enough numbers forward. They have to recover a little bit better, get their second win here in this first half, and, and try and get some more pressure on the UNC defense. That'll take a, alleviate that pressure they're having to deal with right now. away from Pinto. Struck into the box looking for Jones. And this ball struck on the volley. Wide to the right. Well, the referee should have stopped that right away even with the shot. 
because you can see blood is coming from the head. Any head injury, you need to stop right away. So Kingman the shot, and then Dorian Bailey takes a cut just above the eyebrow. For Dorian Bailey, everyone knew she was one of the most talented players on the field. It's been a string of, of injuries. Kept her out. There it was. Yeah, no foul there, just head to head. And I know that, that North Carolina had advantage, but when it comes to head injuries, you don't play around, you blow that whistle immediately. Bailey tore her ACL back in 2015, came back uh, largely off the bench. 2016, this year, able to start all 20 games to this point, which is long overdue for the senior from Kansas. She's got third team all ACC, so it paid off to finally have her injury free for UNC for the season. It's good to see she's able to smile about this. Those are one of those fun battle scars that you have when you go back and either your eye is huge, you, got, you have stitches and everybody is asking how you got it. Just tell a fun story. All that left arm all bandaged up. So a Rade comes in. Dorian Bailey will have to sit for a little while. Get that sorted out. Day actually scored the game-winning goal last year against Duke in the ACC final. Well, after a bit of a stoppage here. Osborne just continues backward. Ricochets into her, and the back pass is a dangerous one. And slid away by McKeever Dorward. Osborne clears it. Dorward's been on the, the end of a couple of decent looking opportunities. Player's got one goal in her 27 shots this year. Well, that was a close one there. And a good job off her line from. McKeever to not allow for anything to happen, but that's where Clemson ha just has to click on a little bit. They still are frustrated with this pressure, and they are making these mistakes in the back that are just unnecessary, and they're putting even more pressure on themselves by not looking up, not seeing where the UNC players are, and that just is something that they're going to have to adjust. If they don't adjust it now in this first half, that's something they're going to have to address in the locker room because it's it's really wearing on them and you can see some heavy legs already in this game and that has to be frustrating for Eddie Redwanski on the sideline. Rade. Into the middle of the field, Jones. Been up here on the left hand side. Got by Goff. Pinto gets knocked down. Promptly takes it right back. A long reward. Bouncing down, able to collect it. Service is deflected out from Rade. And another corner, the sixth of the match for North Carolina. And when you have this many corner kicks, North Carolina has to do something with it. They've had a couple of close opportunities. And she wasn't going to stay off too long. Well, have they changed the rules on me? Because you're not supposed to re-enter in the first half. After the injury coming off. 
Yeah, that's okay. That's right. It got got right the ball cut the, up there. He got the injury. Okay, just making sure. I'm like, wait a minute. He's a warrior. Yeah. All right. Bingham stepping forward. I'm like, I think I think the ACC is change, changing all the rules now. <laughs> Service caught by McKeever. But again, another missed opportunity for North Carolina. With having six corner kicks, you, you have to at least get a shot on goal, force McKeever to make a big save, and they just haven't really done that in the last few opportunities. This is a whistle against Speckmeyer, and it just continues from North Carolina. Redwanski saying, isn't it about time that we beat this team? He said, you know, I'm a New Jersey coach. I'm the kind of guy who wants to get in an alley and do whatever it takes to win. And right now, it's not that Clemson isn't doing that. It's, it's that they haven't been able to hold the ball long enough to really make, make enough time to get their breath back. You know, they're doing enough defensively. They're just not in the attack quite yet. Goff has created space, tries to curl that. Ashley stepping through, lining it up the right-hand side. Ashley, good feel for the space behind. Off at the feet now of Jones. Carolina South by number 14, Morgan Goff. Reaching the byline and played out in front. Flag is up for offside. That is the tightest possible offside. I think it was a goal kick. That it went out of bounds. Did just get out, yeah, didn't it? So that's what it was, yeah. She thought she had the, 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 the ball, she had the cross off, but she didn't. Didn't get off in time. But a nice move here from Taylor Otto. Perfect first touch. It's just a little bit too long. And yeah, it does look like the whole ball went over the line. It's a good call from the assistant referee. Bailey couldn't hold up. This is Speckmeyer. She's got six game-winning goals this year. And she hasn't touched the ball nearly enough. She's so good at holding the ball. She's creative on the ball. She hasn't been able to even attempt to get any of her teammates into their attacking third. She hasn't gotten even a shot on goal. And Clemson just, they need her to touch the ball for them to be successful. So Kat, how do you change that? Do you drop her further into midfield? I mean, it, it seems like it's, it's the ultimate conundrum. Yeah, well, they they have to keep her high because right now the UNC back four is, is having a field day with the lack of pressure they've had. They've been able to look up, decide where they want to go uh, in their uh, possession. They just have to get more numbers up and, and, and join her, find her quickly, beat the lines, and then get some numbers forward. They just they haven't been able to do that. And another thing they could do better is beat, go out wide, put Speckmeyer more in the box, get, get crosses off, not like that, but get more to the end line, try and get some numbers in there and put some pressure on Leshnack and goal. Beckmeyer pushing back here as Lash Knack will take the space. This will run all the way through. McKeever, McKeever, ball popped loose. Osborne plays it up the line. And look for the quick switch. You can see how many players are on this side of the field. And if Clemson can get the time to look up, you have West Westlake on the other side just with tons of space in front of her. Because Ashley's coming so far over the right back for, for North Carolina. But they're so confident in their pressure that they're not going to get that long ball and that one-time switch that could really hurt North Carolina. Ubin Moy, well-weighted ball. Ashley, Otto. Turns and knocks it outside, Goff. Haley 
played it forward. And the whistle goes against Courtney Jones. Another set piece here for North Carolina. One woman Moy, she has a great service. But it's just been, when Andrew Jeske's not in the game, they haven't really had a good heading presence in the last few corner kicks or set pieces. Ruben Moy. Ball launched into space and away from goal. Pinto. Spin. Teal. Up by Haley. And recovered by Kingman. Thorwart able to find the overlap. Corner North Carolina with under seven minutes to play in the first half. Nice play from Dorward and Rade on that right side. It was a thin line to get that combination play through, but it worked. Getting another corner kick. It's, can North Carolina do anything with it? Ruben Moy got an offer from Arsenal Ladies. Could have gone pro. Came to North Carolina. Stock rising. Ruben Moy out of Dorward. It's with Clemson here. And as you get closer to halftime, do you begin to think as Clemson, let's just get to the to the locker room at 0-0? Absolutely, they're thinking that. They are very happy that they haven't really given up any threatening situations in a long time. That's Grace Wagner coming on. This crowd went nuts because she's a Cary, North Carolina native. Well, that's exciting for her to, to play on this field. And just probably another sub right now for Clemson just to get some, some legs because they know it's going to be a battle in the second half. But they have to be happy with this result considering that North Carolina has really dominated this first half. Here comes the overlap. Moeller all the way through by Pinto, collected. Shot is on, deflects backward. Westlake. And turned over. Good step in. Clemson returns in kind. Halfway decent look here to maybe get a cross in. We'll find Speckmeyer. the season began and there are certain things about North Carolina that you can write down in, in ink before you start. Like it's going to be a 3-4-3 formation. Anthony Dorrance said he's dying to play it. It's just the personnel are this way. It seems like they've been a little more organized, a little more put together in this, you know, four back system. It, it's worked out large in part. Yeah, they've grown well as a team this season. They went out to California, played two top teams in Stanford and Santa Clara. And they lost both of those games, but they learned a lot about themselves. They learned they had to make some adjustments and like dropping Alicia Russo a little bit lower, even though she's not in this game, but other players as well that they made adjustments for and it really helped this team. And one of those is realizing that they are better in a four back. Jones won't be able to circumnavigate the defense of Goff. Well played from Goff there. That's sophisticated defending. Laying out for the ball. Dorward. And Teal. In the Bailey. Around Pinto. There's a lot of space 
on this left side for North Carolina. Goff needs to, to get a little bit more wide quicker, be an outlet for Pinto right now. Just like that, she needs to get wide a little bit quick, quicker and give UNC some of that width because they were doing really well on this left side, getting the early ball in, finding Andrew Jeske. She, they had one of their best opportunities hitting the ball off the crossbar when they did that. So if they can get some more services in and get it to far post, uh, it's been some of the best opportunities for North Carolina. Ponacorso in Westlake out for these final three minutes of the first half. Clemson held without a shot so far. This would be the second time that North Carolina has kept the team without even an effort at goal in the first half, the other being Miami, who are not quite of the same caliber as Clemson. The Florida State loss, Miami got some shock waves. We, we spoke with coaching staff from Florida State during the week. The shots were only 25 to one and the one shot came in overtime. They didn't feel too bad about how they played. Well, that's a, the that's a thing in soccer. You're always going to have one opportunity, and that's what Coach Kikorian talked about. There's always one opportunity, and even it, with the 25, they just weren't able to finish theirs, and could be the case tonight. If Clemson gets that one and they finish it, that could be the, the time that Coach Wodronski was talking about, that maybe the ball just finally bounces their way. Under two minutes to play in the first half. So get by onto the right hand flank and lofted long. And it backward and cleared by Haley. Fullborn. Otto now. Goff. in a bit dangerous from Kingman seeds the foul 75 ticks to go in the first half and I like this from the referee is this is just a late tackle even though it was easily cleared you don't want to see that especially with that leg coming up at the last minute, One minute. One minute. One minute. Coming up at halftime, we'll see if we can't scrounge up a, a good halftime interview guest. Time will tell. Stay tuned. Highlight stats and more. From Cary, North Carolina. Just feels right being back here at Wake Med. Nothing against MUSC Health Stadium in Charleston, but. This is a great venue. Home to the NWSL champions, like you said. And just soccer tournament going on, and it's a good fall feeling. We're just thankful that the temperature is a little higher than usual this time of year. Absolutely. Staub headed backward and falls for Jones. Ball in front, cleared, and a chance to hit this on the volley. And we're headed to halftime, all level. And if you're Clemson, sweet relief of getting to the locker room on level terms. Yeah, absolutely, they need to talk about the, the pressure of North Carolina. They expect that every time, but this really affected them. They have to be smarter in the back and not take those unnecessary risks that really put them under a lot more pressure than necessary. So Clemson on their way out. The Rodwanski side hanging in there. If you're Anson Dorrance, you would think pretty happy, no? Yeah, he's got to be happy with the performance. They definitely dominated in this first half. He's got to be frustrated, though, that they didn't score any. He's walking over to talk to us, but we'll see what he has to say. But if I were him, I'd be happy. But the adjustments now is being more mentally focused in that final third and, and, and challenging McKeever just a little bit more. We'll find out what Eddie Rodwanski's planning when he comes back out and as the North Carolina Tar Heels head off into the locker room. Team with a significant shot advantage that hasn't carried over to the score line just yet. Staub quiet in this first half. As Coach Dorrance saunters over. Scoreless at halftime between North Carolina and Clemson as Anson Dorrance in his 40th season at the helm of North Carolina. 
ready to join us from the field here in a moment. Yes. Let's head down to Anson Dorrance now. Coach, what did you make of the first half? It felt like you had a lot of the ball and did a lot of what you wanted to do. Well, except uh, the most critical thing, uh, to score a goal. So, yeah, I was happy with our play. Uh, obviously, we've got to do a, a bit better job in the box. Uh, but, you know, let's give uh, Clemson credit. Uh, they're tough defensively. We didn't get too many uh, clean looks. And so, uh, yeah, we've got to figure out a final pass. And given the half chances, we got to put them away. Well, when you go into the locker room, what kind of adjustments will you make to help those final passes and, and, and getting that ball in the back of the net? Well, just simple stuff like uh, a lot of the balls from the flank are just straight, you know, balls into the into the uh, defense. Uh, no, we got to bend them a bit. Uh, if we're going to shoot a ball across the six, we've got to have a near post runner. I mean, all the fundamental stuff, uh, uh, Kat, that you know so well. Uh, we've just got to do a better job in the final third with our quality. So bent balls, uh, near post runs, uh, framing the back post. And obviously in the half chance is getting them on frame. I thought Bridget did a good job winning headers. Uh, but again, headed down, headed across the frame, because uh, right now uh, we're uh, you know hitting posts and it's just, uh, it's not good enough quality in the attacking third. We have to be uh, a little bit better uh, just finishing those chances. Anson, thanks for the time. Good luck. My pleasure. Thank you. North Carolina Tar Heels head coach Anson Dorrance joining us from the sideline as North Carolina and Clemson 0-0 at halftime. North Carolina fans have to be happy with everything but that score line. Highlight stats, maybe an interview along the way coming up at halftime on ATG Network Extra. <laughs>